We are so happy to be joined by former professional wrestler, mixed martial artist, uh, comic book writer, CM Punk. How's it going? It's going. How are you guys doing? Not too bad. Thanks so much uh, for coming on the show tonight. And you never hide it on Twitter. I absolutely just, you're, you're hilarious on Twitter. And I love the thing today with uh, pouring coffee on the ground to sort of salute the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Uh, but your love for hockey, you make it known, as we know, and you're a big-time Hawks fan. Uh, what are your thoughts here on the latest Stanley Cup run for the Hawks? Of course, they're up 2 nothing in this series against the Wild. Oh, God. Well, I don't <laughs> want to say anything to, to jinx us, but, uh, you know, I, w- I was at the last two games, and they're, they're playing like uh, everyone expects them to play. You know, it, it was kind of shaky at the beginning of the, the first series against uh, Nashville, but they, they, they seem to have uh, got it together, and their passing's on point, and Corey Crawford's back to uh, his normal playoff form. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, we're we're in, in Minnesota's home tonight, so I n- never think uh, winning a, a playoff game on the road is easy, but... We'll see what happens tonight. I got my fingers crossed. And I just mentioned on the show, actually, how I feel a series isn't starting to get over with unless a team loses on a home ice. And, of course, the Hawks won the first couple of games in this series at the United Center, a place. It's basically your second home. I mean, uh, we always see you there at the United Center. And what's it like to be a Chicago-born boy, obviously a big fan of hockey and such a big icon in the media these days, and have your team being so successful? Because we, we, we look back to the early 2000s, of course, the Hawks, it was quite a struggle then you got the Taves of the world you got the Canes of the world the Keys. I can go on and on with this list it's, it's quite impeccable if you ask me what's that like uh well it's great because if you were a Blackhawks fan uh and you lived through that era you know how tough it was you know they made it really hard to to be a Hawks fan you know they, they would black out games uh you know uh and I, you know, I don't want to speak ill of, uh, you know, Bill Wirtz or anything like that, but you know, it, it was what it was. He he ran his uh, his ship the way he thought it needed to be run, and it just, you know, it, it really the, the 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 amount of fans who even attended games just was rapidly declining. And you know, just like everything, it ebbs and flows, and thankfully, it's turned around. Um, you know, I, I remember we had an exciting run in like 2009. We made it to the conference finals, and then obviously in 2010, you know, you win a cup. 2013, you win a cup, and it's still a relatively young team. And they've, I think, they've made a lot of smart trades and plays, and there's still a lot of young guys that play on the Rockford Ice Hogs. So there's still uh, a lot of excitement for the future. You know, there's still a lot of great players that are are, are very very young. It's a young team. Um, it's just nice to see. You know, I was. I, my favorite player uh, back in the day, my day, uh, was Steve Larmer. So, it, you know, it, it's just exciting to see Blackhawks that I love that, you know, um, would just constantly break my heart, you know, uh, come through and, you know, win a bunch of cups. And they're just great. They're a great team. They're great to see us. You mentioned you were at both games so far in the series with the Wild, and a guy like Patrick Kane so far in the postseason has looked absolutely unstoppable. Two goals last game, uh, five goals in the in the playoffs so far, and I know he missed a ton of time with that broken clavicle. What does he look like so far uh, in the playoffs because you've been to a couple games? Uh, you know, in the Nashville series, he looked a little gun-shy, which to me is understandable. Uh, you know, breaking your clavicle is no joke. That uh, not only hurts like hell, but, you know, he had surgery to, to, to fix it up. And I, I think he came back early, you know, and it was a nice shot in the arm for the Nashville series. But, I, you know, I, I don't know if I was in, in any kind of Blackhawks management if I wouldn't have held him off like one or two games just to see if the boys could get it done without him. Uh, he he looks much better now. It uh, looks like he uh, kind of got the – the comeback jitters out of the way and the last two games he's he's looked like regular old Patrick Kane you know he just looked like you couldn't even tell he was injured um but that's the thing about this team it's just like yeah you know Tainer went down but then there's still Taves and there's you know Saad there's Patrick Sharp it's just it's the depth on this team is is pretty amazing yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, you can go up and down that list of guys who can produce for this Hawks team. It's quite impressive, if you ask me. Uh, CM Punk is our guest here on Face Off on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. Nick Alberga joined alongside Tyler Mataraz. Now, I got to ask you. Uh, you're obviously you've been in plenty of high pressure situations, as we know. But how much pressure did you feel when you took part in the Hawks shoot the puck competition? Because I've heard from a couple people who have done it that it's a lot of pressure in front of a lot of people. Well, you know, it's funny. Yeah. Um... I think when you're in a high-pressure situation, doing 
whatever your job is. You know, I was a pro wrestler for many, many years. So to me, you know, it, it never felt, I mean, I, it always felt like a high pressure situation, but like I always could deal with it. I actually thought I worked better under those circumstances. But when you're doing something, you know, I'm, I'm also a huge Cubs fan, Chicago Cubs. So like when I would throw a pitch or send a stretch, uh, same thing as doing shoot the puck at the Hawks game. Uh, like all of a sudden you feel like this ridiculous amount of pressure. Uh, I think I did it three times. The last time I, I, I finally sunk one right down the middle. So um, it's just, you know, you're, you're, you're there, you're in front of 20,000 savage hockey fans, you know, and it's just, it's a little overwhelming, but uh, it, you just got to remember to have fun with it. Arguably, the Hawks uh, have looked like the best team so far in the postseason. I know Anaheim uh, has looked really good, too, sweeping their yeah, first they're round. they're undefeated, man. Anaheim yeah. undefeated. It's crazy. They, they've looked good, and, and they could keep it going tonight uh, in Calgary. But uh, when you look at all the other teams left, uh, especially in the East, because uh, the Hawks are obviously a favorite to make the Stanley Cup final uh, once again, uh, who do you see uh, a team, which team uh, is, it, is there that, uh, that can beat the Hawks? Uh, who do you think it is? I don't think anybody can. Be <laughs> I was going to say they need to play the way they're playing. You know, they're they're unstoppable. You know, I said that last year too, uh, and obviously the Kings beat them in a in a overtime game seven. Uh, but that's why I love hockey. I think anything can happen. I think, you know, it, it's hard to count anybody out, even though you have three series in this uh, the, the the second you know second part of the, the playoffs that are. You know, two teams are up, three teams are up two to nothing. You know, it's still anything can happen. And obviously, I cite the uh, the Stanley Cup champions from last year, the the L.A. Kings. Well, look what they did in their playoff run. Their playoff run last year was ridiculous. Like they shouldn't they shouldn't have made it out of the first round, and they won the cup. I feel like that's a jab at Bailey. <laughs> we'll have to see. You have a good little t- Twitter war there with the uh, the mascot of the LA Kings. Uh, CM Punk is our guest here on Face Off on Sirius XM NHL Network Radio. I uh, want to take this spin on things. Uh, obviously, you're part of mixed martial arts. Um, Chicago ranks second uh, for fewest fights in the entire NHL with 15 this year. Uh, fighting in hockey, I mean, Ty, we've talked about this so many times on the show over the last two, three, four years. A lot of people feel that it's not a part of the game anymore. I think there, there's a place for fighting in hockey at the right point in time. It remains to be seen what happens in the long run with this thing. Uh, but curious to get your thoughts. I mean, you think there's a, there's a spot for fighting in hockey right now? I think there's a spot for sticking up for team members. Definitely. And if that means you, you toss your gloves off and you fight, then, then so be it. Uh, you know, obviously the, the goon, you know, for lack of a better term in hockey was probably more popularized by Philadelphia in the seventies, you know, they, they would just beat the crap out of people and that won them some cups, um, you know, fighting just to fight. Yeah. I, I see how that's a detriment to the sport. You know, it's a, for as an outsider looking in, it could probably be like ugly. It's too barbaric or, or what have you. But, uh, the reason I like hockey is you get penalized when you do something wrong. You know, and whether that's the officials, uh, you know, putting you in the box for two minutes or whatnot, or it's somebody on the other team, you know, taking umbrage of, uh, of the fact that, you know, you you boarded somebody on his team, he's sticking up for – so there's there's definitely a place for it. Uh, I, I definitely think it happens a lot less frequently now, but sometimes, you know, somebody takes a liberty with somebody on your team, you know. I mean, let's, let's be honest, Patrick Kane is a smaller guy. So if, you know, you got a, a big six foot five guy, you know, charging at him, trying to lay a hit on him, if he, you know, sticks his knee out or, you know, if, if the hit's a little bit dirty, somebody on the Hawks has got to take up for him. You know, it's normally the way it works. And it's one of the reasons I like hockey. Yeah, it's the way I look at it as well. I mean, if you got to stand up for a guy, you got to do it. And that's why I think there's going to be a place for uh, for fighting in hockey for a while at least uh, before things may evidently change. Uh, CM Punk, last question before we let you go. Uh, it's been the talk of social media for like a week now, and it happened on Saturday, of course, in Las Vegas. Uh, would, would be interested in getting your thoughts on what you thought of the Pacquiao-Mayweather fight. Um, you know, I had a, I had a house guest. I wouldn't have watched this fight unless uh, my buddy Lars uh, wanted to watch it. So uh, he wanted to watch it. He paid for it. Um, and I, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. You know, Mayweather is 
probably the best defensive boxer, uh, maybe of all time, certainly of this generation. And Pacquiao just, just couldn't get it done. Um, you know, if I was a betting guy, uh, I would have put money on, on Mayweather, and he did win. So uh, I, I don't think uh, the fight was boring. Yeah, overall, let me say this. I'm not a boxing fan. Uh, I, just, I, I just don't get into it. I, I watched uh, the, the two fights that were before that, and it just, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I, was, I was looking for, for head kicks and takedowns the whole time. Uh, it, it just, it doesn't, I don't know, I, I, I'm not going to say I don't get boxing. It's just not for me, you know what I mean? Um, I'll cheer for the Chicago Bulls uh, because they're hometown, but I also, basketball is not my thing. I'm a hockey guy. But I, I watched the fight. Uh, I don't understand people complaining about it. If you, you knew what you were ordering, you knew how much it was, and you know if you were wise to the game, you knew what was going to happen. Mayweather was going to do this thing. It, it, it wouldn't have been wise for Mayweather to change his game plan to all of a sudden become a different boxer and go out there and you know do what? Try to he, he spent his entire career not getting hit. That's what he does. Now that doesn't make for the most exciting fight all the time. Uh, so people complaining about it, you knew what it was, you ordered it in any way, and you're going to order his next fight, too. Everybody's going to see the guy get knocked out. He markets himself brilliantly, and that's the appeal. It's a really good point. Uh, I would like to thank you uh, so much um, for, for spending the time here tonight, and uh, enjoy the game tonight, Hawks, and a wild game three coming up. Thanks so much. Uh, no problem. Hey, anytime you guys want to talk about hockey, I'm your guy. It's fun.